Hello, hello. We are so excited to be here. I am Patty. I'm Carrie. And today we are going to talk about brushes. And we're super excited to do it. You're going to um, have some hippie noodles blown, probably some confusion, but then you'll have a video that will be online on YouTube. Uh, make sure you subscribe, ring the bell so that you're notified. And then also don't forget to save. If you have a video that you think is super helpful, yeah. you can hit the save button. It puts it in your you can make categories of things like I've got recipes and painting and DIY, different things like that. So you can save them and go to them um, on your, your own YouTube account. Yeah. Very handy thing to have. I keep all my favorites there. All my favorites. We go through a lot of YouTube, YouTube videos. Here. I go through a lot of YouTube. <laughs> that is the queen of YouTube. I don't know. I don't know things. So I want to know things. Yeah. So I, I go and find things. I want to know the why of things. Yeah. Today's going to be like a why of things. Yes, um, absolutely. I have brought along... So we recently, someone had, Patty had mentioned her brush boxes, box of brushes, and someone asked if we could show it off. So today we are going back in the Wayback Machine and picking, pulling out some of Patty's first ever brushes that are ancient, old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sad face. Um, I was talking about my little flower filbert brush that I bought accidentally and didn't need it, but ruined it and it became a flower brush that it could just like pounce little flowers and I looked for it today I cannot find it anywhere and I'm just a little bit like sad because it was just this perfect ruined brush yeah it did the perfect technique it was so right it well yeah it anyway well. so but we're gonna show my brushes we're gonna have a contest to see who knows how many brushes I have in the box so um, that's gonna be a prize and then if your question gets answered yeah we had asked yesterday on our Facebook page. If you have any questions about brushes, we are going to be talking about brushes today. So if the question that you asked is answered today on our live, we're going to, if we mention your name and we ask your question, then you will get a prize as well. And I'll reach out okay. to you after the live. Yeah, I'm excited about it. So um, we are on YouTube. We are on Facebook and those are the main channels. We're on the other Yeah, we're on Twitch as well. As well and yeah. those are where we do all of our lives, but then you can also find us mm -hmm. on TikTok and on Instagram and we're pretty much all over the place. Yeah, we're busy. We're busy. <laughs> we are busy. We are so busy. Um, Speaking of YouTube, uh -huh. let's talk about YouTube. So on YouTube, you can find us live every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern, but then we also on Saturday mornings release a video that's either a technique or how to use a certain brush or how to create a certain project. And <laughs> so last weekend, we had a a super popular video yeah. on using a Dollar Tree surface, and we stained it, we spattered it, we stenciled on it, and then showed you how to add hooks to the bottom to make it a mug holder. Mm -hmm. And we had so many comments of people saying, oh my gosh, I wanna do this for Christmas. And what I love about this, and one thing that Patty and I talked about and she talked about in the video is, when you go buy a surface like this, buy two, a, so that you have one to test, but B, if you're going to do something that's a holiday theme, yeah. then you can switch it out and do one that's an everyday theme. And yeah. I just, I think that was my favorite thing. That was my favorite takeaway from the video over the yeah. weekend was. Well, and then you. turn it around. Um, so I used the back to test my stain colors. And then um, it already came with these sawtooth hangers. Mm -hmm. So if you buy two of them, you when you put your two nails in the wall, then you can take that one off, put the new one on, and now you have either seasonal or you have yeah. um, everyday coffee. And then look at the price. Three dollars. Three bucks. Yeah. So that's in their um, Dollar Tree Plus yeah. section of things. I haven't actually been back to the Dollar Tree since that came out. No, um, we haven't. Carrie's gone. Yeah, we've. it's been a while since we stocked up on surfaces pretty heavy <laughs> last couple yeah, times we went. This technique, when I, I, here I'll take it from Yeah, you. go for um, it. So what I like about it, it's also wood wood, so it just does stain really pretty. And I use those water-based stains, mm -hmm. and then I show you in the video how to do this shading technique on the outside using just stain layers. So it's a really interesting, um, like I, I interested myself, you yeah. know? So um, sometimes I come up with ways to do things that are just fascinating, and it's like, oh, that's really cool, that's fun. So, um, yeah, I love that project. It turned out really well. All right. Um, this weekend, 
We are going to kind of do a little bit of a continuation of what we're talking about today, mm -hmm. and we're going to show you some extra tips on It's going to be all shady. Mm -hmm. So this weekend's video will all be how to use five ways to shade using a stencil or not using a stencil. So both ways, like either or, because it's two different kinds mm -hmm. of things. But I'm going to show you different applicators, different things to use. It'll be simple, but it'll get you started in... So I think what we love about this is this depth around the outer edge. I think that's what makes it cool. Um, I think when I'm looking at my brush box here, I'll turn it to the side, I like the side better. Um, if I'm looking at my brush box, I've got a drop shadow on that. I've got some highlight rubbed in up the middle. I've got some shading. It just gives it depth. You can achieve all of that using your stencil or using your knots. You can stencil things on and then um, you can use brushes without the stencil on to get the shaded effect and stuff. But um, so before um, this all, including like all these lettering, this was all traced. Then it was based and then it was based two or three times. It was then drop shadowed by hand and then it was highlighted, it was shaded, everything else I did to it. And so it's like 18 steps. And so when my art studio flooded, we just, the little ring on your toilet that is made out of plastic, apparently you can get metal ones. Everybody go home and tell your husband to replace those <laughs> with metal because it took out two years of our life in my art studio. But then I focused on stenciling because I didn't have a place to make videos at the time. And so then it changed me from doing all this base and trace and doing all of this into just stencils and then that has just blown up our world so in a way it was a good thing yeah but whew, it was a hard thing so um anyway so but this was done the old-fashioned hard way and but everything that is done here can be done with stencils or the techniques that we're using today mm -hmm. and so you can have a project that has that depth without doing all that work yeah. and i love that um a couple more quick announcements today is um, 11, 7, 2023 mm. tomorrow, 11, 8, 2023 is the last day to pre-order the ah. November, 2023 project of the month. We have been filming videos on this one yeah. and we are really excited. Yeah. The project of the month has, um, exclusive video content that is just for you. When you order it, it's for the people that are in that club. If you will, it's not a club yet. We're, we're working on the details of how to make that happen. But um, it is, so you get the exclusive. We talk about how many different ways there are to do the things. You get supporting literature. You get physical photo examples of things. There's, it's a lot. It's a really good deal. And the value of all the parts. There's so many pieces that you get. So it is a really big value. And there are pieces you can use all year long. And yeah. over and over. Over so, and over. Yeah. yeah. We, we make a point to make sure that there are things that even when that season or yeah. whatever's over, there are things in there that you could potentially use. Yeah, there's no way that you could ever argue that the value's not there. So um, that is you, yeah. And then this this project of the month, um, your clue is that this would be something that would be friendly for you to paint with your kids or with just yourself, um, you know, like that kind of thing. It's You could have fun with this project. It is not a... It's not a serious project. It is a absolutely fun project. And that's that's kind of a little bit different. We kind of tend to stick with home decor only kind of things. And this yes. one is a it's a home decor piece, but it's not a home decor piece. Yes. Agreed. Yeah. I'm going to stop talking. Agreed. <laughs> going to give it all away. Give it all away. Okay. So our second announcement is for today, since we're talking about brushes, we are doing a flash brush sale. It's going to include some select brushes and tools out of our collection and I'm going to share the link to that. The sale ends tonight at midnight 11 7 2023. So this is a flash sale. It's only for a few it, hours. It will not it will not be good if you catch us on this YouTube channel later. Um I'm sorry that you missed it because like you know it's you came to it and it's gone. <laughs> However, um, that means you should subscribe to studior12.com. Go to the front page. There will be a spinny wheel. You can fill in your email, and then you will get the email every six days a week. We do an email with a blog, like a blog post, how-tos, sales, 
So you'll know when things are happening because of that email. So make sure that you do go sign up for that because that is how you're going to find out. And before we get started real quick, we've mm -hmm. had a few questions asking about where you got your boxes. So these were... Mm. These were made. <laughs> so my husband, Ted, was my woodworker for 25 yep. years, and um, he made these boxes. Um, I would like very much to get a pattern made so that if you have a woodworker, mm -hmm. you can do this. Um, there are many things that are difficult about these boxes. You have to put the box together, and then you have to bandsaw the opening after you put it together, and that makes it a big bandsaw. So there's some limitations to this. I do love these boxes. I use them for probably 10 or 15 years, and um, and they have done a great job. I've got some Russian sable brushes in here that will last 30 years if they're kept in a good environment. And I today, when I was sorting through them, um, I you can actually literally, if you load your brush right, you can paint the entire alphabet in one load of the brush. They're so well That's made. That's amazing. It's amazing. You can't get them anymore. They're not available. I used to carry them. Um, so much of the world has changed, and um, it makes me somewhat sad, but I'm not going to go there. Okay. I can't I, find my brush, and I can't get a Russian sable brush. <laughs> We've had a lot of comments already. Don't forget that if you would like to be entered for a chance to win a prize, then you can give us a, an estimation. Can you open oh, your box? Let's do that. Okay, so. Uh, an estimation of how many brushes are in the Artist Gone Wild box. Yes. And so there are the brushes. And I can't see inside there right now because Okay, it's close it up. They've had too much time. They ah! can't count. Don't pause it and count. You don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone asked where the knobs on the bottom handmade as well. Um, the knobs on the bottom are um they're mass produced. Um so they are um bear with us, I think. I think they're out of Florida, um, mm -hmm. were the ones that I got them from. I think you can get them on Amazon as well. Um, so they were just bought there. They're flat on the top, and then you just bolt them through or glue them on or whatever like that. But they're super fun. Um, when you're painting things, don't forget. Where am I at, Steve? Over here to you? Or wherever I want. Okay. So I love the idea of doing just a little bit of a different effect on every one of the feet. And so that's just kind of a fun thing. When you are making a tray or you're doing something like that, don't forget to mix and match because that just makes it fun and funky. Mm -hmm. It puts the fun in funky. Yes, agree. And so I think that that's amazing. Um, I want to start here um, with this. You've got questions, so why don't you start? tell me where to start? Yeah, you want to start? Um, yeah. We, our first question from Vicki was, with so many choices out there, how do you tell a good quality brush from one that is not so good? Okay, so I'm going to put this aside right now. And well, actually, I'm going to open this up. Okay. So if you're counting, you have, you know, you have a little bit more time. Here. <laughs> okay, so you have I've got categories of brushes out here, but you have I've been an artist for 35 years and I have curated brushes that work. I've gone to the trade shows. I have bought the sh I almost said that word. I bought the bad brush from the trade show guy. That was the man, no offense to the men out there, but men's hands are way bigger. And so when you use a brush, you need it to fit your hand. So that's important. So finding, you know, if you found an Amazon woman that was super tall and big and she's demoing a brush, you gotta be like, let me try that and see if you can do it. But find an artist that you um, admire their style and you <coughs> want to paint like them and then see what they're using and then buy those brushes. Um, and so then in my case, um, the brushes that I have carried, so we've been in retail for, um, so I, my website started in 1999. Um, and so we have been doing, started with my patterns and then picked up brushes. People wanted to be able to get things in one place. So I opened the wholesale accounts and got the things and then dealt with inventory and have been dealing with it ever since. And supply chains have not made it easier. But anyway, so these are the kinds of things. So we have categories of brushes. You have ovals. These are um, an oval that is shaved. So this is an oval that has a slight taper, but this is a very significantly shaved oval. These are ovals that will dry brush and they will antique and they will distress and they will do some of that. These are ovals that are really good. They'll keep their shape when you make a leaf or you make a petal. 
or something like that. So this is an oval that's maybe more true oval. And then this is one that is because of the way it's made, it's, um, it's got that taper and it'll do like a scratchy te texture. I need to do something just on that because you can do beautiful techniques with the dry brushing and that's easier than some of the other techniques that are decorative. Um, don't forget that sponges are brushes. So your sponges are a whole category of brush. They will make different textures for your backgrounds. They will blend. You can use this guy right here to make shading around your outside of your project. They're amazing. Um, these are flats. Flats are used to fill in. Flats are used to shade. Some people call it floating. Um, a funny thing, when I was learning to paint, I learned from a book and floating was a technique that was in every book that I bought. And it took me two years. There were no videos, you guys. We didn't have the internet when I was learning to paint. And so, um, and I, I had all these kids and I couldn't, I had one car and all these kids, you know? So um, I couldn't go to lessons and take classes and stuff because what would I do with the kids? What would, how would I get there? And so it took me two years to learn to do it right. The day that it happened, I was like, Eureka, you know, I did it. So um, when I did that, I was like, one day I will teach. I was already teaching a little bit, but one day I will teach and I will make sure people can learn this technique without it taking them two years. So that's kind of when my teaching started. And then these are the brushes that we're all familiar with. These are the ones that you guys might not know exist. These are the purple handled ones. And then these are these, um, they have a little grip on them. This is the largest size of this. And so you can see that these are significantly fuller. I prefer these, but these work very much the same, just not as full a brush. So you're getting like a smaller size. I think these are more affordable. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's something to consider. These are in that sale right now. So you can get some dome brushes if you need them for painting multicolor projects. This is what I would do is get some of these and some of these so that you have both. And then this is some, this is a specialty brush. So this is our White Wonder um, and it is amazing. It's shaved like this, um, the dry brush over here, the oval glaze or yeah. So anyway, the one that's more for dry brushing, it's shaved this way, it's dome this way, and it has these hairs that stick out and that's what makes it amazing. It does great beards, great grass, great texture, um, and spattering is the dream. This is your dream brush for that. And then when we're going on, we have these foam brushes. These are the polyfoam. Um, we also don't think I have one. I did a project this week and I used up every darn one in here so they're all out drying. Um, but anyway, so we have the polyfoam and then these are also foam brushes that have the same um, density. You can use these to add um, texture and technique, base coat, all of that. Um, these can base coat, these can base coat, these can base coat. The bigger sizes are the ones. Um, and you want to take advantage of sales like this because that is where you're going to have great savings and then you can afford to buy multiple brushes. All right, where are we at now? All right. I feel like I talked question. and talked. As a beginner, which brushes would you highly recommend or must-haves? And that's from Rich. Okay, so Rich, I would love to know if you're talking about stencil brushing. If you're stenciling, then you need the domes. Um, that will prevent you from bleeding under. That will that will make everything. You can shade with them. You can do highlights with them. Get the set. Um, start with the cheaper ones if you don't have money laying around. You know, like just do what you can. Add one at a time. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, make sure one of the things that you can do is to, you know, match. Maybe you want a couple of little brushes and you're going to order a surface. Put a couple brushes in, if they're on sale especially, while you're ordering one at a time that'll save you on shipping. Sometimes it will even pay for the brush. So, like, watch that shipping level. Um, and sometimes you got to play with your cart. Yeah. But um, carts are complicated and there are rules and there are exceptions and... Got to find the right thing that'll do the right thing. But you guys can play with your cart and see which one will give you that kind of deal on shipping. Okay. Can I give you one that we haven't talked about? Yes. So we, we kind of like talked about some of these questions of things that we specifically did want to answer because we had dozens of questions that come in. We've had a couple of people on YouTube today say that they would like a recommendation for a larger stencil brush for large letters for porch leaners because they're not good with a roller. 
So what would you recommend for that? If you don't feel comfortable with a roller. Yeah. So if I was not comfortable with a roller, I would go with the big old foamy brush. For stenciling. Oh, for stencil. Oh, not this yes. one. Not no, for stenciling. For stenciling. <laughs> um, no. So yeah. And the roller, um, the way you get comfortable with that roller is watch my video on that because we have one on how to stencil mm -hmm. with the roller. Um, and then you really literally, if you think about like my hand pressure on this paper towel, it's no pressure at all. It's just the weight of my hand, but I can push down. You literally want to push on that roller almost as hard as you can on the paper towel to offload it and then go with no pressure to roll on and then you're going to be golden. But that's not the question. So if I was going to use that, I... I would totally just do my dome. Yeah, well, yeah. and it, then depending on what project you're oh, doing, oh, 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 you oh, can yeah. use the jumbo dauber. Yeah. Jumbo dauber for big is brilliant. And then the ink sweeper for, we have so many videos on this, you guys. Um, this is for good, good for straight lines and bigger areas. And then this is good for big areas. And you can blend with this as well. This is a magic thing. And those of you who aren't, I don't, I don't want to preach to the choir and go over and over again, but I feel like it just needs to be said. I have so many of these from doing trade shows and conventions. And people, when you're at a trade show, you don't know what you're doing. You just like put it back in the bucket or you let it dry over there or whatever. I have so many of these that are war torn. They have, you know, color dried around the edges, but they still work. And I'm talking like for 10 years. So these are do stay in good condition and they are amazing. So they're durable is what I'm trying to say. Okay. All right. Our Ooh. next question is from Christine. And Christine's asking about cleaning the brushes mm. and she, her dome brush specifically, and was asking about using Dawn dish detergent yeah. with it. So what's your thoughts on how to clean the brushes and should you, you be using a soap of some sort? Right. So this is a common question for us, um, both with the sponges and with the domes. Um, and you can on these, uh, I want to talk about material that things are made out of. And I do need to circle back to the question before about if you, the beginner mm -hmm. brush choice, um, because I, this is for only stencilers, mm -hmm. but if you were painting, there's a couple more tidbits. So I will circle back to that. Okay. Don't use soap. You don't need soap. Um, if you get stuck and your brush is gunky and you, you let it get all dried up at the top or something like that, you can use a brush cleaner or some rubbing alcohol. Um, so either of those two things will be great. But if you use soap, then you're going to have that residual. Soap breaks down and it doesn't evaporate like the alcohol and the cleaners. So you're going to, um, you want to have something that cleans out completely and you don't want to spend a hundred years at your sink. Like you really yeah. don't like, d don't use soap. You don't need it. Can um, I circle back to yeah. you? Are you done with the yeah, soap I'm thing? Done. Okay. So when we're talking about the painting, the large areas and not using a bigger stencil brush, the largest stencil brush that we recommend is the five eighths mm -hmm. that we have. And that is because when you get bigger in brush size, so, this is domed. Yeah. However, the the bigger it gets, the larger the bristles get, and the bigger chance that you yeah. have, you lose control when you get so big. That's why the biggest one that we offer is a five eight. Yes. Yeah. Um. One other thing on that is that so you have seen us over and over again swirl. So notice if I I'm going to use the back of my hand. If I stipple, I'm only affecting this space right here. If I swirl, I'm in inches, right? So I am a much bigger area. So if you have the larger size on the tall porch signs and you swirl, you're going to cover a much larger area. And if you make sure you offload five to 10 times, depending on how big of a load you got, then you're not going to have any problem with bleeding under. And the swirling is so much more relaxing to your arm. Um, my arm ought to have like a jackhammer mode on it from stippling so yeah. much, you know, it's like, da, 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 da. okay, I want to circle back to the beginner brushes because it's very important. Everybody needs a foam. You're going to varnish with this. You're going to base coat with this. You're going to, um, you're going, you can shade your background with this. 
You can stipple and pounce with this. This is amazing. Everybody needs the medium size of these guys. Okay, so that is gonna do your basting and stuff. Now you could do that technique with this. So if you have one or the other, you don't need the other. This is a little bit more versatile. You can also varnish with this, which I love. Yes. So this would do the job of these. So this is like, if you only could get one, this is, what is it, two bucks? <laughs> yeah, it's a dollar or something, cheap. I don't know. It's, it's very affordable. And then I would, if I was doing painting, I would get a number 12 or, um, this is a half inch. So I'd get a half inch flat. And this is, so the length of the bristles and the kind of bristles, okay? So that's what I was gonna tell you. These are natural bristles and so they're scratchy. These are Taclon and they are super sensitive to every problem you would ever want with a brush. But the reason you like them is because they're soft and they flow. And so they'll base coat without ridges. They'll do all the things. Um, we need to do a how to um, base coat um, an area video. Um, sorry, I'm just thinking of what would help you guys right there. Like, why would you use one of these brushes? If you didn't have a stencil, but you needed a shape, how do you base that shape? You probably need that piece of information. So I would get one in this size, the half inch. And then I, this is my favorite brush of like all time, including the dome, really. Um, this is the one inch and this is the um, oval glaze. And this will make bamboo. It will, um, it will shade, it will highlight, it will dry brush, it will antique, it will do all the things. Um, this is amazing. Um, you need a liner. Everybody, everybody that paints needs a liner. They just don't know they need one. Um, okay, this while we're on that, that's okay. one of our questions okay. from Amy. What's your favorite liner brush? Okay, so this one we had made for us. Liner brushes are really difficult to find the right length, and I'm going to show this is going to be to Steve over here so he can close in on it. When you, when you are holding a brush, if you hold it and you don't anchor yourself, so see my pinky is giving me some lift? That lifts my liner brush. If my liner brush is really long, I don't have enough pinky to lift, you know? So like I support it either here or I support it with my pinky. And then it gives me the ability to plunge down and lift up. So I get a nice liner brush. So with the liner brush, what happens with the liner brush is it's a soda straw. So you fill it completely up, you load it with water and paint, and then you dribble it out the end and just let the tip drag along, okay? And then it, just like when you put the soda straw, you plunge the end, and then you can do one drop at a time. Um, it's the same thing. You're just doing a little release at a time where that touches on your surface. So you have to be able to lift and move your brush up and down. With a liner brush, you also have to have posture straight. Um, straight, straight, straight. If you turn it like this, it flattens it out and then it just does a smear. So liner brushes can only be used straight. They can be used in a smear, but not if you're trying to line. Okay, so it's a liner brush, but we had this one made for us um, by this brush company because it was so hard to find good liner brushes. So this is the Mighty Fine Liner. It does a mighty fine job of lining. Or my turn. Oh, her turn. Is it my turn? Yeah. Okay. Cindy says, do brushes have more than one purchase, purpose, purpose mm -hmm. such as floating or base coating? Yeah, so um, here's what I say. I was telling Carrie this the other day. So the reason there are so many brushes in the brush bin is because, let's find a couple of examples. So this is a flat. And oops, lost him. Where'd he go? Hang on a second. Oh, he was a perfect little example. Are you? Eh, you're getting fuzzy. Okay, we're gonna use this guy down here and we'll get out of the brush bin. Um, brushes are my friends, right? So I could just live in that brush bin for a hot dang second. Okay. So these brushes, this is um, stained with paint, but notice on the end that this is fluffy and this is chisel. Okay, so this is how brushes start. When you start with a flat brush, 
it be so it goes through stages of life right so a tree starts as a sapling and then it becomes a big old tree and then it becomes something that's putting seed out on the ground and then it becomes something that feeds the ground and then maybe it falls down and then it becomes compost for the ground like it has a whole entire life cycle brushes are the same way so this brush is going to be perfect for floating floating takes a perfection brush or a perfection technique and um, you just want to be able to do a good shading technique with that so I would use a brand new flat brush to float with first until I wear it out and then it might become a base coat brush. And so now I can load it with paint and then I can go ahead and base with that. And then after it gets a little bit fluffier, now it becomes a stippling brush. So now it'll make a texture because it opens up in the middle. Part of that is because the paint dries at the ferrule. The correct washing your brush technique, we have a how to wash your brushes video. You need to watch that video. With the dome brushes, they can go in the water. I don't need to worry about them at all. Um, Steve about had a little stroke yesterday. Um, I almost dropped one of my Taclon brushes in the water uh, that we were filming. And he was like, oh, you can't do that. And he's absolutely right. So when you're going to wash one of these, you want to wash it, and we're washing it on the bottom. We're pushing the ferrule. I'm not doing this. It looks like I'm doing this when you look at it from not from the inside. I'm actually pushing that ferrule down on the base of the water basin. And so I push along there, and I turn it over, do the other side. Then I swish it, and then I pinch it out. And sometimes I'll pinch it out on my paper towel. <coughs> If I still have color, I'll go back and clean it again. So that's how you can keep it in good shape and not get the drying around there. So um, brushes have many lives and each of them, I don't throw brushes away as is evident of my brush collection. But um, yeah, I totally, and I have an arsenal of tools for different reasons. Um, and then I go to trade shows and find things and pick them up and try them. So it's like, I have um, sumac in my spice drawer, but I have yet to use sumac in a recipe. So, but I have it, you know, so if I need a dagger striper, my gosh, by golly, I've got myself a dagger striper. And so that sometimes is something that we have a little bit of like collect the tools syndrome and um, you don't always need them. So a flat, an oval glaze, um, probably a number eight oval glaze as well. Um, would be a great thing because this is going to do your dry brushing techniques. It can be used on the flat side and on the chisel side. And the rest of these, the white wonder, because spattering, spattering is your friend. Um, it will hide mistakes. It will make your project <coughs> deeper. It will do lots of things for you. So um, I think that's good too. So I think those are like basic basics. Like that's the utter basic. My turn. <laughs> So many words. Kat asked, when your Kat. brushes are no longer straight due to paint dried up in the ferrule, is there a way to straighten the brush? I heard you can boil your brushes. Okay, so um, I laughed out loud when Carrie told me that that was Kat. I'm not laughing out loud at you. I'm laughing because I did that. Like, I also heard that you could do that. So I took a, I think it was a round brush. So a round brush is like this kind of thing. And... Neat thing about a round brush, um, when you get them, so see how that's bushy? When you put water and paint in it, it'll tend to kind of come back to a point, generally speaking. When they get too far gone, they're too far gone. But I had a terrible round brush, and I thought, well, I'm just going to boil some water, and I'll dip it in there. That brush, it had the worst bad hair day, and it lasted forever, and it couldn't go back. I couldn't get it to go back. So if you're going to try that technique, um, you want to try it on something that you don't like and then um, let it cool just a little bit and it's supposed to work. Um, but yeah. It's going to depend on the bristle type too, natural yeah. versus synthetic bristle. Yeah. And most of these, the, the technique was recommended with the synthetics. So that's all of these Taclon brushes. But um, I did not have good success and I... I would be very careful with that. But what I would do is get some rubbing alcohol, put it on my palette, and then so if I did this and I can show you, you're going to like be amazed. Okay, so we're going to squirt. This is just straight up rubbing alcohol. 
Um, I chose this brush before I knew I was going to do that, so um, this is not pre-planned. So if I start working my brush into rubbing alcohol, see how it's just going flat? I should, and I need it to be on white to see if any color comes out of here. It'll start softening. I'm getting a little bit of gray, a little bit of red color. It'll start softening the color in the pigment. And you'll see the color. Do you see that color starting to be released? So that will release your color and I'm keeping it nice and flat and that will prevent the brush from opening up. And I really ought to do, because that one's like rounds. I don't know. I think I treat them nicer. Let's go with this guy. He looks like a, a victim. So let's go in here and see what comes out of his brush. So rubbing alcohol, look what that's, look what's coming out of there. And so that will release the excess stuff and clean them up. And I'm pushing right on that ferrule. I'm not pushing on the tip. And so now I can rinse him out. And then we'll go on to our paper towel. And I think you'll probably see, oh, it's pretty clean. So anyway, so that's how you can clean the ferrule gunk out. The feral like the brush feral, not feral like the cat feral. And I think that technique of reaching into the, when you watch me do this, it really looks like I'm jabbing my paint brush down, but it's literally this. I'm slightly arched backwards and I'm just hitting that feral. So be careful with that. Do not be stabbing on the tips of your brushes. Okay, no, this is not one we have talked okay. about. Peg asked, if you have a stray hair sticking out, how do you fix it? Such a great question, because this is a universal question of the ages, and I don't know if I have a tool to show you. I do, because I have all the tools. I love tools. Let's find a brush with the stray hair. I got too many. Okay, so this is my $30... Um, brush that is the Russian brush. So it's a million dollar brush. And if you get a stray hair, he's got one, but I don't know if I can isolate it for you. And he actually, that would probably would be okay to stay. Um, okay, well, we're gonna pretend. We're gonna pretend with this dagger striper. He's got a hair sticking out right here. So when you get that stray hair, then what happens is that stray hair will go and drag paint along with the other part of the brush so it's not behaving the way you need it to. So what you'll do is you'll take your box knife or whichever knife like that, and I can't see it down here because it's not contrasting enough for me. Anyway, so you go, pretend like this is my stray hair. You just go and slice it right at the base near the ferrule on something that you don't want to be ruined and just slice that hair away. Don't cut it with scissors because it'll do a different thing. You just slice against that hair right down to the quick and then that will take that hair away and then you've saved your brush. All right, um, back to the alcohol. Okay. Can you use alcohol and stencil brushes? Wait, that was this? The Not that, can, you can, you <laughs> could try to use wine, but that would be a waste of ounces. Okay, it so, would be. Deb asked, can you use alcohol and stencil brushes? Yes, you can. So I know we had covered in the past, I, I shared a video on choosing colors and how to bring dead brushes back to life. And that is kind of like the last, I don't know, five minutes of that video is magic. Just watching all of the gunk come out of the videos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, oh, this, this is amazing. <laughs> okay, so normally these brushes don't make that noise. <laughs> Okay, so that is an amazing example of a brush that has been so... Uh, I've been saving that one. <laughs> oh, my Lanta. Oh, good golly. So what will happen is, in, this is much better in um, the brush base, and we use a ginger like grater. Nails on a top. I know. It's like, <laughs> so you just will give it a quick little soak. Now, sometimes you can soften your glue, so you want to be careful. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm even going to get here with that. I can grab that 
Oh my lanta. Yes, yeah, see the green, you see the green, the green yes. starting. So if you do this before you're at the stage, then it's much easier to get out. So you want to like notice, eh, I've got some buildup. And then you can go in with that rubbing alcohol. <laughs> my gosh. bottle of brush cleaner. I don't know even, I don't think we carry this anymore because we've had problems just sourcing things, but this is a Winsor Newton brush cleaner. And I'm going to go into this guy because then you'll be able to see it. You go into that base and this, so this is a ginger grater. Uh, and then you can kind of saturate a little bit so it clumps in the bowl on the bottom and you'll start seeing that green come out. And this is made out of all kinds of safe things, which I love. The, the rubbing alcohol will work very, very well, but this is a fantastic brush cleaner. But so you can see by having it pulled, I can really start pulling that color out. So see how that's soft now? And that's just gonna pull. Now I've got gray coming. I've had the green, now I've got gray. I've got psychedelic coming out of this brush, man. So see how it's flexing now? So that is gonna work your color. So that's how you, this became a how to rescue your brushes video right now. <laughs> but I think that's important. Um, stencilers, no offense to anybody that's a stenciler because we're a stencil company. Um, stencilers tend to be a little bit more rugged and hard on their brushes, but the brushes are super durable. If you get, I'm gonna move this, anything like this, this is your princess brush. You don't treat it like your workhorse brush. You don't treat it like a hammer. You treat it like what's a tool equivalent. I don't even know. I don't, a chisel maybe. Um, anyway, you're gonna you're going to treat this as your princess. You're fine. Like wearing lace on a job site, you wouldn't do it, right? So this is gonna be your go out to dinner clothes. This isn't gonna be your go dig a hole in the ground clothes. Analogy. <laughs> All right, so, and then when you get done with that, then you'll rinse this in your water. This would take quite a bit more of that um, technique, but look, at, I can splay that out and see the green coming out of it still. That's funny, but it's, it's bending. It was not moving, was not moving <laughs> before, and right, listen. So that is how you rescue a dome brush. Okay, where are we at? Okay, so um, that's all the questions that we had okay. discussed. We have received dozens and dozens of yeah, questions a lot. about the brushes. So if you have asked a question and previously and we did not answer it today, or if you asked a question today and we did not answer it, we will sit down and we always go back and yeah. um, answer your questions. Some of them take a little bit more time. Some of it was technical stuff. Um, and I was like, Carrie, I'm going to have to sit down with you and answer this question. Well, in some of them, if I don't know, or if it's something I've never heard of, I'm sure that Patty knows what it is sure. and has heard of it, yeah. but I also don't want to blindside her on a live. So, <laughs> so some yeah. of these are just things that we're, we're going to talk about yeah. off camera and then we'll answer your question. Yeah. And then there's some that are super specific. They go down the lane, they go down a lane through a corn patch across the pumpkin field, whatever, you know, yeah. and it's like, oh, okay, wait, wait, it's too far. We can't, we can't do that here. So we'll get that answer to you, um, but yeah. So and sometimes just, they become a video, and sometimes they do. Yeah, become and that's a, video. a lot of times. Um, someone asked today about shading with different applicators. Mm -hmm. That's going to be our video this weekend. Yeah, yeah. That was um, such when we started dragging out the brushes. Make sure you go and see the brush sale. Um, you don't want to miss out on that. Um, these are great brushes. I have been using these brushes um, this many years. Okay, so this is my second one. This is my first one. And these, these are brushes that have been used in my projects for years and years and years, and they just don't go bad. Um, they, you have them, they're yours. Um, and then what I did with these, this has a little divider inside of here. Um, the utensil totes that you use for um, picnics, and stuff like that, if you save your toilet paper roll or your paper towel roll and cut it shorter, mm. makeup tubes, paper card, cardboard paper tubes. Yeah. So if you bend these like this and you stuff it down inside the utensil totes, then your brushes will stay upright. And 
turned upside down and backwards. And so they stay upright instead of if you put them in a, let's go into here, into a solo cup, then they're laying off to the side. And that, this is not okay because the minute something starts leaning off to the side is the minute it is gonna cause you a problem. So if you put these inside here, inside your solo cup, and then maybe you have a sponge in there to go with it and that keeps them upright. Mm -hmm. So these tubes, makeup tubes, um, the cardboard tubes that your mascara comes in, save those, put them inside your utensil, and then you have a handle. You can take your brushes from place to place. You know, you can go have a party, have fun. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. I think we did it. I think we did it. All right, you guys, we appreciate your questions. Um, I would love sharing the brushes with you guys. I'm sorry we can't offer you the boxes. I know. Maybe one day. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> Not today. Not today. <laughs> Not today. We, we, don't, we don't have that at this point in my history. But um, no, so we are so happy that you guys ask questions. Please keep asking questions. Make sure you subscribe, ring the bell, do all the things, and we'll see you in the next video.